Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel and welcome to the first development update video. This is hopefully the first of many videos to come where I share some of the latest development projects I have been working on. Currently my main focus is the asset management system for Blender. While I'm not an official Blender developer, I am actively discussing my ideas with their team. The current plan is to have Julian Icell to officially begin development of the asset management system in a few weeks after he wraps up his current projects. So in the meantime, I've been developing prototypes and different asset libraries to hopefully give Julian a head start when he begins development on this project. In a previous video, I explained how asset libraries could be installed and demonstrated one of the libraries I created called Toybox. This allows users to maintain their own Blender assets, including objects, collections, materials, and worlds. Now, after releasing that video, I got a lot of great feedback and questions. So in these development update videos, I'm not only going to show off some new development that I'm working on, but also answer common questions that come up. So in this video, I'll be answering two questions. The first, how will users maintain files that aren't native to Blender? So this includes OBJ, FBX, 3DS, all those different formats that are used to work with other applications. And the next question is, how will users maintain UI assets? Now, I wasn't familiar with this term when I was asked this question, so I'll be explaining what that means and also possible ways of handling those. And to answer these questions, I'm going to be showing off a concept of two new libraries. Now, keep in mind that these are just concepts and still need further development. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first question. How will users maintain files that aren't native to Blender? So to solve this problem, I created a new library called the Quick Importer Library. Kind of a generic name, but it does just that. It streamlines the import functionality of any file format. And so the way that this would work is the user would set the path to wherever they're downloading these different files. So here, I'll go ahead and set the path to my downloads and then just select this models directory and then click set active path. And so that's going to load all of the assets into our asset library. And you can see we have OBJs and GLB, FBX, all sorts of different formats. And so here, if we want to add one of these models to our file, we can just drag this into the viewport. And now all the information in that file has been imported into our scene. So it just provides a very quick way of adding that information into the viewport. And there could be a lot more development here to where we could find ways to automate the thumbnail creation right now with these file formats. They don't come with any sort of preview. And so there would be ways to, once you set the active path, have it automatically start generating the previews in the background. But for now, just having a quick way of dragging these into the scene helps out and simplifies the process quite a bit. Now, you can also just save your active path. So if it's something that you're going to be reusing in a lot of other files, you can just save that so you can quickly have access to, to that. And here, let's go ahead and set another folder really quick. Go to the images and set the active path. And so now I have the new directory here. I can just save that really quick as well. So now I have a way of toggling between those quickly. And for images, one of my favorite add-ons is the add images as planes. And so when we drag in a regular PNG or JPEG or something, that's going to just add that file as it would if you use the import images as planes command. And so you can just drag those in, you can position that where you want to, and it just provides a very quick and easy way to add those into the scene with a you know nice little thumbnail view. Now, you may be asking, for each different file type, there's all sorts of different settings and options that you can set before you import the model. And so here in the library settings panel, we'll have just general settings. So if you didn't want to see the thumbnails, you just wanted to see a list, you could, you know, change between that. And you can see that there's tabs for each different file type. And there's going to be a lot more. This is, again, just still in development. But for the images as planes add-on, Here's all the different settings that you would typically choose every single time you import a new file. And so here you can just change your settings and that's going to be saved every single time you import that type of file. And so that's just one way that importing and maintaining other non-native file types to Blender could work. Now the next question I got is directly from the Blender development team and that is how would we maintain UI assets? And so UI assets are 
things like the camera preset system, being able to set a bunch of settings for your camera and then quickly switch between those, or also the Mac caps or the LookDev HDRI. So the information that's in here and the information when you're in solid view, these different Mac caps here. Now, my first initial thought was there's already a system in place to maintain these types of assets. And I felt like it worked pretty well. But it does make sense if we're going to have an asset system in Blender for all of the assets to work with the same system. And so I created a mockup for a camera preset library. And this is very simple, but here this is the camera preset library. And so a lot of these are just the different presets that ship with Blender. And so here, if we want to add in a camera, we can just drag this into the scene. And you'll notice that if a camera doesn't already exist, we'll automatically add one and set it to the view. So we kind of have a few time saving features there that simplifies things for users quite a bit. We also might have some different options that you can quickly set. Right now I just have lock camera to view because that's a very common thing that I'm toggling between when I'm working with my projects. But you'll notice here if I get out of camera view real quick. So now if I wanted to change the camera preset, I could easily just drag one of these onto the camera and you can see that that's going to update the focal length, the sensor size, any settings that are on that particular preset. And so it just allows a very quick way of updating this information. Now, if you went through the process and let's say you, you know, changed the focal length or made your own preset, you could easily just click this button to save your current settings to your asset library. Or let's say that you have a different location where you want to load your presets from here in the library settings window, you could set a different location for the library to look for the presets. Or if you want to have a quick way of exporting yours to a different computer or to a different user, you can use the export and import presets so that just provides you a quick way of bundling all your presets that you currently ha currently have loaded, and then sending them off to another user that you're working with. So this is just one way of dealing with these types of UI assets. And again, for the mat caps in the world environments, I mean, I've already created a way of loading different HDRI images as the world. And so I could put some toggles in here that will allow you to specify if you want this to be loaded as a world environment, or if you want this to be in the look dev mode. And so I think it would work very similar to this to where you would just see all your previews in this window, and you can just drag and drop them into the scene. So that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video. Let me know in the comments below if you find these development update videos helpful, I can try to make this more of a regular thing that I do. Also, if you have questions, or feedback about other possible libraries that can be created, then please leave a comment below and I'll try to address that in the next update video. Feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel for updates on future videos. I'm also going to attempt to be more active on other social media sites. So I'll put links to those in the description below if you want to follow me on those. And thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.